Okay, now we're given that the ball rolls off of a ramp at slope 0.15 with a velocity v naught of magnitude 70 centimeters per second. But we want to find the vector velocity. So we multiply that 70 centimeters per second by the cosine of the angle, the angle we have here, uh, plus the sine of the angle. And the angle is the arctangent of the negative slope for reasons that we detailed over here. And there are many ways to find the sine and cosine of the arctangent of negative the slope. None of them require that you actually take that arctangent, although with a calculator that would be an easy enough step. Um, but one way or another, uh, using the approximations we used here, using the triangle that we have here in one way or another, we can quickly determine that the initial velocity would be about 69 centimeters per second times i minus 10 centimeters per second times j. Now, if you have 65 centimeters per second here, that's because uh, I used a wrong approximation. I screwed up the approximation, uh, as I think I've said a couple of times. I'm not having a stellar week with details. Okay, I'm um, not sure about the rest of it, but the details are, are, are really kind of uh, escaping me for some reason. Okay. Uh, anyhow, we get the 69 centimeter per second times i minus 10 centimeter per second times j. That's our initial velocity. Our acceleration is negative 980 centimeters per second squared times j. So that our displacement is v naught delta t plus one half a delta t squared vector v naught vector a. And that's going to have to be equal to the x displacement times i minus the 0.96 meter vertical displacement times j. <coughs> Substituting for v naught delta t, uh, v naught, again, 69 centimeters per second i minus 10 centimeters per second j, multiplied by delta t gives us the 69 centimeter per second delta t i minus the 10 centimeter per second delta t j, and then minus 490 centimeter per second squared delta t squared. And that's equal to what? Uh, well, this right-hand side hasn't changed. Whatever our x displacement is times i minus 960 centimeters times j. Well, now, i component equal to i component means 69 centimeters per second delta t equals delta sx. Now, we don't know delta t or delta sx, so hopefully we're going to find one of those quantities from the equation that we get when we set the j components equal. Well, set the j components equal, and uh, you get uh, negative 10 centimeter per second delta t minus 490 centimeter per second squared delta t squared here. And yeah, reverse those terms. Uh, then is going to equal the negative 960 centimeters. Well, I didn't write that equation. I just added 960 centimeters to both sides, knowing that that would come out plus 960 centimeters over here. So now we have a quadratic in delta t. So that delta t is what? Well, negative b is going to be 10 centimeters per second, plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared. 10 squared is 100 centimeters per second squared centimeters squared over second squared. And then, <coughs> excuse me, 490 times 960, I think comes out close to 188,000. Okay. 500 times 1,000 would be 500,000. This is 40% less than that. Uh, and uh, that's a little bit less than that. I think I kind of overestimated that. Uh, but one way or another. The 100 centimeters squared per second squared is not going to have much effect here. That's such a small part of this. It's out there in the fourth significant figure. It's not going to have much effect. But the 10 centimeter per second you have over here is. When you calculate it out, 10 over 980 is approximately 0 0.01. So this is going to give you 0 0.01 in centimeters per second divided by centimeters per second squared gives you seconds. So you get negative 0 0.01 seconds. And then plus or minus uh, the square root of this, which I approximated as 0.43 seconds. And uh, you, know, you, can work, you can work this out a little more accurately. The point is then, though, we have this negative 0.01 seconds that would be 
added to negative 0.43 seconds to give us negative 0.44 seconds. I should make that negative 0.44 seconds. Or added to the 0.43 seconds give you plus 0.42 seconds. Now it's the positive quantity that's going to govern this. Okay, the 0.42 seconds. The negative 0.44 seconds basically means, okay, you're coming up here and you're starting with the downward velocity. It means if you started something from the ground over here and it rose uh, to some height so that at the instant this projectile rolls off the edge, the velocity of this projectile matches this velocity. It would have had to peak before starting to come back down. So it would have taken it longer to get from here to here than it will to get from here back to the ground. That's your 0.42 seconds and your negative 0.44 seconds. Your negative 0.44 seconds means that before coming here, that projectile that started from the ground would have to have taken 0.44 seconds to get to this point because it would have had to go to the peak and come over the peak a little bit. Okay, hopefully that part makes a little bit of sense. Now, I haven't completed the problem, but you know what to do from here. Uh, you still have to solve for delta SX, but now you've got your delta T. Multiply that by your 69 centimeters per second, and I'll, I'll just write that in there. I'm going to do that off camera. So we can take this 0.42 seconds, plug it in up here for delta T. We get delta SX of 69 centimeters per second times 0.42 seconds. Not sure whether that comes out 28 or 29. Uh, it's going to be pretty close to 0.4 times 70, but a little more than that. Um, and 0.4 times 70 is 28. I think there's enough uh, there to bring that up to 29, but I'm not sure.